Good afternoon and evening, everybody. Thank you for staying through the entire session um, of our legacy event. We are in the, in the process of closing for the afternoon and evening. And uh, to give closing remarks, we have Dr. Kelly Cormier um, joining us. Um, Kelly is the Food Safety Division Chief within the Center for Nutrition at USAID's Bureau for Resilience and Food Security, where she leads a team that addresses food safety risks in food systems through technical assistance and global leadership uh, in support of the U.S. Uh, government's global food security strategy and USAID's multi-sectoral nutrition strategy. Kelly is a champion of gender integration and knowledge management with a broad, within a broad safe food systems portfolio. And for eight years, she's worked with the Bureau for Resilience and Food Security as an agricultural economist and as a division chief for inclusive market development. Prior to USAID, Kelly led an active research agenda that explored the evolution of policies and institutions affecting agricultural markets and the coping strategies of men and women. She served as a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Sciences, the Fulbright Association, and the National Council for Eurasian and East European Research. Kelly holds a PhD in development studies with specializations in economics and law from the University of Wisconsin-Madison and an MS in agricultural economics from Michigan State University. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you, Kelly, um, to present the closing remarks for the first day of our event. Over to you, Kelly. Thank you so much, Shivani. It's, it is my pleasure to be joining you this afternoon to wrap up the first day of very productive and dynamic discussions. And it's clear to me that there's also a lot of pleasure among the presenters to have reached this 10 year milestone of learning and evidence generation and to share the results with all of us. We can see that. Um, well, well, I know that we're all experiencing a little bit of Zoom fatigue and would have preferred to be together in person. I do wanna thank the Nutrition Innovation Lab for bringing us together on this virtual platform and for organizing such an engaging agenda to drive learnings and collaboration around nutrition. What a rich discussion today. Where do I begin? Uh, while listening to the presentations, the enthusiasm for the work was palpable. A passionate community of excellence was, was on display today. Um, so thank you all for, for that, for sharing that energy. The testimonials were inspiring and signaled so much potential for evidence-based change. Today's discussions are just one indication of the successful partnerships the Innovation Lab has forged over the past 10 years. As evidenced by the range of speakers we heard throughout the day, the Nutrition Innovation Lab prioritized bringing diverse actors together to drive the nutrition learning agenda and build the evidence base for strong action. We saw that too. So I wanna share a few of my key observations based on the key themes of data, multi-sector programming, capacity building and food systems that we heard about today. First, data. Understanding the factors that impact nutrition, including season and location, food environment, culture, governance, when we assess data is important. The Nutrition Innovation Lab demonstrated how to assess the impact of these factors, how to identify solutions and implement them. The demand for data is immense and collectively we're building that evidence. And as we collect this evidence, we're reminded of the many challenges when measuring impact and dynamic environments and of the importance of considering intermediary outcomes in addition to longer term outcomes. Evaluations are critical to tell this story and show the success or the failure of programs, but must be timed appropriately to capture data and information once the project closes. So we learned about that. Second, multi-sector programming and timing. Dr. Webb reminded us that the nutrition impact from multi-sector programming, it takes time with different types of interventions interacting and generating results at different times. And so he's helping us manage our expectations around multi-sector nutrition programming. We heard a compelling example of how sustained research efforts like the Nutrition Innovation Lab provides the time to test emerging hypotheses early and in different contexts to explore the puzzles that emerge along the way. Um, Multi-sectoral nutrition program, such as the ones in Uganda, um, such as the Uganda Community Connector showed positive results in terms of maternal and child diet. However, such programs may need longer 
to show positive impacts on maternal, maternal and child nutrition outcomes, such as stunting. So that was a really compelling example. Uh, during the many presentations on the linkages between agriculture and nutrition that were on display today, uh, we recognize the complexity of pathways from food systems to diet quality, while also highlighting the need for us to hone in on the role of food processing, income generation schemes to increase market access, affordability of prices and governance. Complexity. Uh, ecosystem functioning was another important area of research that provided insights into resilience and climate shocks. Very contemporary uh, themes for today, people's experiences trying to use markets to stabilize the natural world were different depending on the food group. And we also learned that these insights can inform timing of multi-sector nutrition interventions um, and should consider the different population groups. A third theme, building capacity for policy change. Increased capacity and the right kinds of capacity are critical to moving from evidence generation to policy change. Publications are important. And the Nutrition Innovation Lab demonstrated that the key ingredients for translational science, which was a, a term that I heard today, such as teamwork, partnership, vision, and rigor, help us move from evidence to policy. During the rich discussion, a point was reinforced that diversity of capacity building across fields and sectors is essential to driving the changes that we're working towards together. It's truly a team effort, and that was on display today too. This afternoon, we heard examples from Uganda, India, and Nepal that illustrated how to build capacity among different kinds of stakeholders in ways that sustain capacity within communities. For example, in Uganda, we heard the testimony of scientists from Uganda who worked, trained, and collaborated with the Nutrition Innovation Lab. They shared stories on how their partnership with the Nutrition Innovation Lab not only supported their professional development, but how that knowledge was taken back home and put to work to support national capacity building and policy efforts in Uganda. So very exciting example that will continue. Um, partnership and collaboration with the Nutrition Innovation Lab supported host government scientists using rigorous evidence and strong data that elevated nutrition at the national level. That's what we saw. Um, another example that we heard about uh, was the Boston Bangalore Nutrition Collaborative or the BBNC. This was a program supported by, um, by the Nutrition Innovation Lab that established the capacity of Indian scientists to address nutrition capacity and influence national nutrition policies. Another very important example. Uh, finally, the fourth theme, the food systems, leadership on food systems. We heard at the beginning of the day from Dr. Tilstead who shared reflections on the value of scientific uh, contribution. She acknowledged the pivotal role the lab played in elevating thinking about diverse diet quality and diversity and how that advanced our thinking beyond the need for adequate calories. The Nutrition Innovation Lab built the foundation of a nutrition agenda that acknowledges the role of food systems. And now as we look ahead to next week's United Nations Food Systems Summit, Food systems as a tool to support nutritious, safe diets is put into sharp focus, which ties nicely to tomorrow's discussions, including a round table with Representative Jim McGovern, alongside Sean Baker and Rob Bertram of USAID, Mr. Kieran Rupakati from the National Planning Commission, Government of Nepal, and of course, Patrick and Shabani from the Nutrition Innovation Lab to look at where we've come and where we're headed. I'm confident that tomorrow's conversation will prove to be just as fruitful as today's and will provide us all with much needed motivation to keep pressing forward toward our nutrition goals. Thank you again for your active participation today and we look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow. Thank you.